Around 1990 at the Blue Horizon in North Philly, I had the luck of sitting next to local boxing legend and ref Frank Cappuccino. I asked him what his favorite boxing moment was, and he laughed and said without a pause, Spinks and Tyson. And what a fight that was. It was 1988, and it was the end of the golden era of boxing defined by Muhammad Ali, who was stopped by the unknown Leon Spinks in 1976. A shrewd former used car salesman from Philadelphia was in the middle of all of this. Ronald Butch Lewis had left Bob Arum's top-ranked boxing for the unknown, a huge gamble for a black man in the 70s to create Butch Lewis Productions, which would later branch out into entertainment and partnerships with BET. But back then, his only client was Ed Too Tall Jones, and not the football player. This guy was a midget wrestler. It all changed after Leon Spinks beat Ali and shocked the world in his eighth professional fight. Leon and his younger brother Michael were Butch's guys, and suddenly this flamboyant boxing personality was for real. As HBO began moving towards unifying the heavyweight division, Butch Lewis held his new light heavyweight champ Michael Spinks out for more money. And before fighting Tyson in the epic mega fight, as it was to be called, Butch Lewis got Spinks almost the same amount of money to be Jerry Cooney. He may have worn his chocolate tuxedo to other fights, but Lewis will be forever remembered by the one he wore for the 91 second fight in Atlantic City. It earned Spinks a record $13.5 million, and it was the fight of the century, maybe the last one where that many Hollywood stars had showed up for a fight. At his memorial service at the Chase Center, there were a few guys wearing a tuxedo with no shirt and a bow tie, Lewis's self-proclaimed chocolate tuxedo, and there were also an awful lot of police. Wilmington County State Federal Undercover Secret Service, it was as high security as Wilmington can get. No aerosol cans of any kind allowed, or cell phones. Many a U-turn was made back to their car when the metal detectors picked up a cell phone as well-wishers filed past a maze of Butch Lewis pictures, most blown up to poster size as he posed with family, his charities, and the many celebrities he counted as friends. Many of them were in attendance, including Denzel Washington and even Stevie Wonder, who performed a song at the end. I also saw Mike Castle milling about, who was pretty tall, but this was a big crowd, not just in numbers, but just big. I imagine there must have been many fighters there to pay their respects, and while I didn't see him, Iron Mike Tyson was somewhere towards the front of the room, in front of the large movie screen that made this a true multimedia funeral. It was a big, splashy event, similar to his two-and-a-half-day birthday bash at his Bethany Beach House, just less than a month ago attended by Senator Carper and where the OJs provided the live entertainment. And it was there that he died of a heart attack at the age of 65 last week. When the white carriage finally took his casket away after the ceremony was over and the guests were headed towards their cars, I realized what a giant star Delaware had lost. When is the next time I'll see a public service like this at the Chase Center? Mm -hmm.